Welcome back. Uh, firstly, before I introduce the fabulous guests that I have today, I do want to say thank you to those of you who are listening, to all the people who keep coming back uh, for all of your support. Uh, I have been very proud to say that this, this week I was announced in the LinkedIn Top 20 Voices of 2020. And I, I you know, on, on the one hand, I'm you know, I'm clearly deeply humbled by the fact that that's actually happened. And I have to say, and in some respects, very shocked. I certainly didn't set out to be using LinkedIn this year to uh, get myself into a, some top 20. I certainly didn't know anything about it, to be honest. Um, and, but now that I look back, uh, I'm kind of not surprised because 2020 for me has been rather an interesting journey. And Today, there are a couple of things that I do want to talk about that uh, are relevant not only to how that happened for me, but also uh, why I think it's really uh, useful to be speaking with Simone Allen, who I've invited in today. Um, and that's a couple of things. One is the power of mentoring. And the second one is the importance of resilience. So let me just start with a couple of things about that. Um, you know, one of the things that I get asked a lot from people, well, actually, probably not asked a lot, actually, it's probably quite the opposite. One of the most common comments I get from people is, oh, my God, I don't know how you do it. But surprisingly, you know, I would think that the next obvious question to ask would be, how do you do it? But you'd be surprised at actually how few people turn around and actually ask me how I do do it. So this week and in this particular conversation, I am going to talk specifically to one of the things that I do do to help me do it. Uh, and that is mentoring. I have, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I've not I've always been, I've not always myself been strong in this area. I'm kind of one of those people who likes to make sure, you know, I'm pretty independent. Uh, I have an embarrassing story called, I don't like people to think that I don't have it all handled. Uh, and because to me, not having it handled has been a sign of weakness and incompetence. And of course, not wanting to look like I'm incompetent. I don't like to tell people when I don't know I've got anything handled. And that honestly is a real paradox when it comes to getting a mentor or surrounding ourselves with people uh, to really get answers to achieve the results that we want. Um, so that's kind of something I do want to talk about a lot today with Simone. Um, before we get into that conversation, then I do want to just highlight, you know, I met Simone uh, earlier this year. Uh, paradoxically, I think, you know, when we talk about what 2020 has been like, mentoring through this time has been one of the most important things for me. Uh, and I came across Simone uh, earlier in the year, actually, uh, last year I was working with uh, Trinity P3, Darren Woolley. Uh, he had a you know problem that he was wanting to solve. He'd been in the business for over 20 years. And when he set out to start his business, his purpose was to help people achieve commercial purpose through their creative process. And he had three Ps and one of those was purpose. The other was process. And he said to me, you know, I've always wanted to succeed in the area of people but I just haven't managed to do that yet and so he invited me in to do the work with him on that project and the sh long story short was that I made a recommendation that we uh, look at doing a mentoring program in the marketing industry because his customers were, were in that space and it fulfilled on his purpose to really support those people. Now, when I went to the market to start looking at uh, all the options that were available with mentoring programs, as a good researcher does, I went out and I looked at all the options. I looked overseas and I looked here locally and uh, there are a lot of new players in the market, some new upstarts um, in the industry. There are also some really successful ones in terms of the tech. Um, but the thing that struck me about Simone Allen and the mentor evolution was that it wasn't just a tech platform. It wasn't just uh, a great program, but it was the combination of the, the tech, the solution, but perhaps more importantly for us, it was the way that they're able to create a community inside the platform uh, by having things like roundtable discussions, uh, conversations that actually bring people in together. It wasn't just about matching people up. So the long story a short again, uh, what happened was Darren and I, we got the, we bought the mentor revolution in, got 
you know, got to know Simone and her team. And, you know, we ran a pilot and I'm very happy to say that pilot has been a success. And Darren and his team now have gone on to launch a nationwide mentoring program for the marketing media and advertising industry. So hats off to Darren. Um, and I look, and I do want to acknowledge Darren for this because one of the things that Darren did really well uh, was he had a look at what the problem was that he wanted to solve in this market before COVID hit. Uh, and because he took action on it, he's been able to navigate this year, perhaps a lot better than what I've seen even myself navigate this year. So, um, but Simone is remarkable. So not only is Simone leading the mentor evolution, I discovered that actually she's got 21 years running her own business uh, called Mondo Search. So in the area of recruitment, she's been in it. So in 21 years, she tells me she's placed 28, sorry, 2,800 leaders in their roles. And she said the one common thing that she saw across all those leaders and their success was that they all had a mentor. So Simone, there are many things that we're going to talk about today. And I do want to start with, you know, your passion around mentoring and your experience in your, your business. But also the thing that I do eventually want us to talk about is this latest project that you've got uh, with having launched, uh, just about to launch the William, uh, William, sorry, Williams, that was my son's name, uh, the Women's Resilience Centre, which is just about to open. Um, so there's some of the things we're going to get into, but let's just come back to welcoming you, Simone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Carly. And uh, yeah, there's no doubt that you do deserve that award, the LinkedIn award for, for uh, the top the top influencers in on LinkedIn because you do talk real authentic stories, which is what people nowadays want to hear. You do you talk topics that are really appropriate and, and relevant, particularly in the business community around leadership and, and topics that we all need incredible inspiration and thought around. So thank you for inviting me to 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 talk to you. Fantastic. So um, let's go straight into the thing that you're very passionate about and the thing that we do want to put the spotlight on today, which is mentoring. Can you tell me how is it that you got, why are you so passionate about it? Yeah, it's, um, it's absolutely one of my platforms in life. And, and it's a lot to do with uh, poss possibly my own raising and what, what happened to me and and seeing that um, I was um, I was raised uh, I was born in the country and then we had to move to the city and um, we didn't have any family around us and and my um, my mum ended up raising us on her own with three kids uh, mm -hmm. for a good decade of my life and we we had no no intergenerational um, family around us to connect with and. Um, so I just automatically kind of reached out to people like uh, just anybody, really, babysitters, um, girl guides, hockey <laughs> leaders, um, sports leaders, anybody just to kind, of, kind of clung to, to kind of um, to, to find, you know, to find knowledge and, and get help and support. And my mum was really young when she had me 19. So she was still a baby herself raising, raising me. Um, so I, I really, really found the power of mentoring in my own life. And I was even when I was young, but then as I got older, I realized um, in business that, you know, all my previous bosses are great mentors to me. Um, they're all very, very special people. And when I joined um, a large recruitment consultancy, even the founders, uh, Jeff and Andrew Banks, Andrew Banks and Jeff Morgan became great mentors. So it was... Look, I think um, just on that, I do think you've brought up an interesting parallel because today we talk about mentors as a thing, but as you and I know, certainly in our generation coming up through our career, uh, we didn't talk necessarily about the role of a mentor because potentially, you know, our bosses were our mentors mostly and the people that were leaders in the business uh, provided that role. A and back then, let's just say time warp, uh, but there were the... the there were, seems like there was more layers in the hierarchy and that there was not as much pressure on time. So you had more time to sit down and talk with people. Whereas Indeed. that just doesn't seem to be the case today, I think, given that we're moving so fast. So right, Kylie, the osmosis at the coffee machine or at the water, water cooler machine, it was always, it was so powerful. And I really feel for, for young people today, particularly leaving school and stepping out into organisations where they're, they're isolating at home and working from home. 
Um, it's certainly shown for us, for the Mentor Evolution, our technology product is a great way to connect staff when they are all working from home. Um, because yeah, we were lucky in that in that sense in, that we had you know we had all these older generations around us learning, learning and 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 that's that's just not happening as much today. So so yeah, it, the power of mentoring for me was was so powerful and uh, and so I saw that when I set up my own consultancy in '98 that every time I hired someone, one of my questions was, what was it that you know, got to you, to you to where you are today? Um, and particularly chairs of organisations when, when I would hire them, they always said, I always had good mentors around me. Mm. And, and it, it's, it was a common theme. Um, and I won't say I placed all 2,800 leaders, it was my whole team that did, but, but the, it was a common trait with all these people that they all said it was as mentors that got me along mm. the journey. There's a stat that says that uh, people are 85% more engaged in the workplace um, if they feel someone's got their back within the organisation. Wow, so. that, that's fascinating because that's exactly the same percentage that are currently unhappy in their job. Yes. What, what is that? <laughs> I don't, that? Given that we're in the uncharted leader here, Simone, what does that say about us? What's going yeah. on? It's kind of 101. If you don't feel someone's got your back and yes. if you think about it in your own lives, in even in community groups that you may be in, if you feel that they don't have your back, it's, it's, it's very difficult to want to stay there and, mm. and participate and to give. Mm. Uh, mm. So, so, yeah, it's, um, it's been one of my platforms and it's really carried me through um, you know, some pretty dark days in my life at certain points. And um, it's always been the mentors that have kind of dusted me off. And yeah, and both male and female, I think, you know, there's another sad thing that often I was raised with the thinking around that women don't support women. I just cannot stand that, that those words. If ever I hear someone say that, I shut them down. Mm. I say that is absolute rubbish. Mm. Uh, some people don't support other people, full stop, whether they're yeah. male or female. There's something, there's some darkness within them that, that, that suggests that they're not going to support you. But mm. that's got nothing to do with gender. Mm. And, and in fact, I have to say that women have been the ones there for me in my very, very darkest moments. Mm. Um, and um, it's, it's women that are absolutely incredible at you know providing deep support honest authentic support but i have to say too i have some incredible male uh, incredible male mentors as well that have been nigel sinclair who was the ceo of avon and so many great male mentors in my life that um that that, yeah, both are so important. Yeah, and, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. And uh, certainly not that I expected that that conversation would come up. But um, interesting you do, because it's honestly, Simone, it's the same for me. You know, I, I have some extraordinary women that I've worked with. That if it wasn't for them, I, I know for sure that where I am today wouldn't be the same. Mm. And at the same time, you know, have worked with and, and to this day have some extraordinary male mentors. And, and I often think to myself, you know, I cannot see myself having one nor the other. Like I could not mm. just be for, you know what, I'm only going to have a female mentor because of X or I'm only going to have a male because of Y. I think you're right. It does come down to the individual and the each of us as individuals have very different strengths very different capabilities very different things to offer and and mm. my experience is this, much like you simone you know it's never for me actually been about gender no it's not at all i don't no. even think about it so yeah yeah and so actually getting into the business of mentoring see so you mm. were in executive search when all this happened mm. at what point did you make the transition to start up the mentor revolution it actually started about a decade ago where I actually decided first to go back to uh, schools because I, I felt that the schooling system didn't provide decent mentors and um, and I thought it was a, there was a real gap there. So I volunteered back to um, actually to Barker College to, um, to help them set up an alumni of mentoring from, um, you know, more experienced people in the alumni with years of lived experience to younger students or students that have just sort of stepped out of college and are off. And that was, just, we, ran a, we ran a pilot program, program, it went really well, but one thing I realised was we needed a technology to back it. Mm. Um, because running, matching, doing everything on Excel spreadsheets, keeping in touch with how you connect with every email, um, managing, watching if there's conversations happening was impossible on an Excel spreadsheet. 
So we were fortunate enough to uh, look around um, and through another um, a beautiful human, Jeremy Out, um, we connected through a community space I'd set up in the city. And before we knew it, we'd found uh, the best license, I believe, a best, best product in the world called uh, yeah, Mentor Evolution is, is our brand. But it, I, it's really powerful, built by a robotics engineer in Silicon Valley. And we have the license in Australia and New Zealand for it. And uh, mm. we've launched it across some big corporates like uh, Seven Media um, and some high profile schools like PLC and um, Joey's and uh, and others. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's a really powerful connectivity technology. Mm. And what are you noticing? Or like, what what are that? What's been the feedback from those companies about the value or the difference that it's made by having? Because yeah. the... it's one thing, right, to go in and say, oh, well, we can just mentoring as a conversation. But what is the difference that you're noticing from them about having things like the technology in there as well? Yeah, Kylie, I think this year's been a groundbreaking year because everyone is um, quite happy to do Zooms and, and they don't have to drive and meet each other. Um, <laughs> yes. So, so Speaking of which, I just need to check my tech. I just, as soon as you mentioned the word tech, I was like, oh, I, I just need to check. So my face is going to disappear for a second. But just, yeah, so keep filling me in while I check the tech. <laughs> okay. But yes, okay. So this year's yes. been a strange year, you were saying. Yeah, and um, it's been a year where people do have an appetite to learn how to how to communicate on Zoom, um, and so mentors now don't have to you know physically organise a time with a coffee and a and a location. So mm. so we're finding both schools and corporations are, are really loving the concept of a mentor tech at the moment, where they can uh, link up mentor to mentee, host big webinars to teach people how to be, become a mentor and a mentee. Mm. And some of the insights, you asked the question was insights. A lot of them are saying that we thought it would be the mentees, the ones that would be the most grateful through this, but often it's actually the mentors. Mm. And the reason why is there are everybody that, you know, we know that we release happy pills when, you know, happy hormones, when we give. <laughs> When we give, and also when we go back on our lived experience, it's cathartic. It's great yeah. to reflect, like I'm now with you, reflecting on my past and seeing mm. how I can share that with you. Mm. And, and it's it really does. It is a great thing for mentors to do, and they so often write and to the school alumni and say, "I really enjoyed mentoring that little guy or that little lady." Mm. Um, mm. You know, they brought so much out of me that I forgot about in my past, mm. and and, um, and they taught me things. They were actually a bit of a mentor to me on tech tech things or whatever. So, yeah, that's sort of the insight that we're getting. One is people have got an appetite to do it more because of Zoom or. Mm. or Google. Mm. Google Teams or whatever you choose to use. Mm -hmm. um, and the two that the mentors are going, wow, I actually really enjoyed doing that. Mm. I mean, you just, you know, it warms my heart, I think, because, you know, having also worked closely with Darren this year on the marketing one, uh, I, I did put myself into the position of doing both. I thought I'll, you know, give it a go on mentoring somebody and I'll even put my hand up. And I, to be honest, the brave part for me was putting my hand up to be a mentee um, yes. because, you know, one gets to this stage of one's life after 28 years of experience and you kind of have sometimes that view, could I, you know? <laughs> what do I need to be mentored about, you know? But yeah. at the same time as a business owner, I just really, you know, I did have to deal for myself with, there is a lot of things that I knew that I didn't know. And whilst for a lot of time, I was trying to put a lot of attention into learning how to do those things for myself. I just got to that point was like, you know, this is crazy. You know, you've got some remarkable people that you've worked with over the years who are very good. I mean, I spent most of my career, you know, in the employment structure, you know, so if I think 23 years. So I was like, hold on, who are you kidding to think that you actually have any clue about what it takes to run a successful business, right? Yeah. Um, and so for me, I thought, you know, this is the, the thing I like about what you've got to offer uh, in the platform itself, actually, is yeah. that it does ask you to identify specifically about what you want to be mentored in. And I think for me, that certainly made the biggest difference because I started to notice there were certain things that, you know, I did not have any experience in terms of running a business. And I thought, well, if I could get mentored in those things, that would be an of enormous value. So that that was remarkable. Mm. Um, but then in the flip side, just on that thing about the men being a mentor, uh, I know there's a big debate about, you know, whether we should get paid or not paid as a mentor. And, you know, I think it's, you know, everyone has a very different view about that. And you've kind of got to go with whatever works for you. But I think just in terms of the experience of being able to give back, 
Mm. I know this is going to sound like the arrogant ego sign, but it goddamn is rewarding when somebody wants to listen to what you got to say. <laughs> you, know, you get to talk about everything you know for a change yeah. and someone gets to learn from that. It is, it yeah. is a remarkable experience. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important to note mentoring is not advice giving. Yeah. It's, it's just sharing of your own lived experience. Mm. And I think too that, um, I find mentors for me in my life is often just helping me kind of prioritize what's the most important thing to get done at, at that point. Like I find they're a great mirror just to kind of push back and say, well, let's actually prioritize what's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth task you need to do. Mm. And I find that's to me very important as you get older in life, you're not, you, you know, you may not think you've, you need mentoring, but for me, that's invaluable. I have the most incredible mentor. He's former CEO of a very uh, large organization and he just manages to listen. And then before I know it, about an hour later, I get an email from him summarizing <laughs> what's priority number one and what's priority number five. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's that is just gold. Mm -hmm. That is gold, and that's lovely, Michael East. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, given that you've just mentioned the word priority, I, I do want to now kind of talk uh, briefly about that because you're uh, so you're a business owner. So you own an executive search company. You are also now the co-founder and CEO of the Mental Revolution, uh, which is a big job in itself. Uh, and now you've gone and you've made an investment. You are launching the Women's Resilience Centre. How does she do it? And wh what are the wh what are the strategies for prioritising this, Simone? Because I do so that must be an incredibly challenging thing managing that amount of work. It is at present, but it, but it, I have to say there's two great things I've got on my side is my health and secondly, my children are a lot older than what they used to be. So they're 17 and 19, so I don't have as much distraction. Um, uh, and I'm a good sleeper, but then I, I, I'm an early riser. I get up at five, so I just power through a lot of stuff before eight o'clock. But um, look, I'm... Um, uh, really, really excited about the Women's Resilience Centre. This has been a, um, a gift of COVID for me. I say COVID is creative outcomes, very important daily, and that's on my fridge. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's uh, and just on that note, I am looking for um, yeah some some extra people who want to join on the other other businesses. But but to, but the uh, do you want me to talk a little bit about the Women's Resilience Centre? Yeah, why not? Let's talk about that now. That yeah, for sure. So uh, through COVID, obviously recruitment in my executive search business went into furlough. And so um, I realised I had some space. And this has been a, a lifelong uh, true north for me that I've wanted to, I've, wanted, I've been thinking about postulating for eight years. Um, I, I sit on the advisory to South Pacific uh, for lived experience. And I have always said that there is such a gap um, after crisis care uh, particularly for, 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 for women who've suffered domestic violence and, and abuse. Um, there's, these, there's some beautiful crisis centres around. There's, there's many of them. Um, but there's this gap afterwards. And where do they go after 12 weeks? Um, often the queues to get community housing is, is you know, a one-year um, waiting list at the least. Um, and so what they tend to do is couch surf um, on friends and family, if they're still in touch with their friends and family, because often they've been kind of pulled away and isolated. Mm -hmm. um, so where do they go? Where, where do they go after 12 weeks of crisis care? So um, the Women's Resilience Centre is a residential care for up to 12 months for women and their children um, to stay um, and get themselves back on their feet. But also we are providing a groundbreaking treatment program that we are working with and building through um, UTS and with the, one of Australia's most uh, respected clinical psychologists in the area of trauma and domestic abuse. Uh, and we're writing a program that will help women to get off that cycle, to change their mindset, to look for mentors. We're going to have mentors that are, uh, you know, women that are, are survivors that are on the other side that, that you know, are incredibly resilient um, and ready to give back. Mm. Uh, and uh, the first centre we're opening is in... Um, 
uh, is in, on the northern beaches. Um, we've managed to secure a property that is just incredible. You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, Carla? it's extraordinary. Uh, you can talk about it. I'd let you talk about it because it is absolutely built for it. It's purpose mm. built. It's got beautiful gardens. It's got you know incredible big big bedrooms connected with bathrooms and. Um, and it's a, a really will be a great space for creativity too, because the, the center is not just going to be about um, accommodation. It's about really picking people up and giving them wings. Mm. We're going to have incredible classes in cookery and cookery and gardening and growing vegetables and uh, learning how to speak and, and um, communicate, and write a resume. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be um, yeah the first of its kind and we want to replicate it um, all around Australia. We know mm. we can. Mm. Yeah. It's uh, a long time coming. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's the first thing I'd say about that because, you know, uh, whilst I personally uh, for myself uh, am not in that situation for myself where I, I personally require the support as a woman for having been in, in domestic violence, I was raised, you know, my, uh, well, I was born to a woman who was 16 at the time uh, who fell pregnant and decided to, you know, well, she was put into a position where basically she was suggested to adopt the child out. Uh, and she had a period of four weeks to make that decision. Uh, but what was said to her was that if she did not adopt the child out, she wouldn't be welcome home, uh, which, you know, I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like being put in that position as a 16 year old, honestly, I don't, I don't think I was smart enough to do any other thoughts about anybody else but myself. But, but I, I think about that. And, and, you know, unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, I think, uh, you know, my mother did decide to keep me, she got to the last day and decided she couldn't do it. Uh, so decided that she would do it alone. But because she wasn't welcome back home, she really was left to fend for herself. And at the time, uh, you know, she landed in the uh, housing commission area of uh, Redfern. You know, I was I was born in Camp Camperdown Hospital, which is just not far from there. Uh, still to this day, in fact, one of these things I must ask her is how she managed to get from there to to the housing commission at Redfern. But she found herself there, and my bed, uh, surprisingly, was the bottom of a set of drawers, uh, and the only clothing that she said she had for me was something that she managed to work out how to knit uh, and she needed a, a, a kind of a thing for me there's this photo that I've got of myself when I was a baby uh, wearing it but she said unfortunately you know without much else that was kind of as good as it got right now of course I, I don't remember that right uh, you know it was well being a child you don't remember these things but I think about it and, I, and it's easy for me to now imagine myself like if I was in that situation how horrifying it was for her to feel like she didn't have anywhere to go uh, and so, you know, I think that what you're doing here uh, sounds to me like, given that, again, I'm very ignorant about what is out there for these now available, but it seems to me like it's got to be a much needed thing to still help those who are in a situation where they don't have anywhere to go. Mm, yeah, very, very much needed. In the 80s, there were a lot more of, of what you call safe houses around. Yeah. Um, and they were disbanded at the same time as when the mental hospitals were kind of shut down and um, there was a lack of focus for that, that kind of area of accommodation and service. So mm -hmm. it was kind of tried to be kind of just forgotten about, which is, is, is disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our ambassadors is a, a lady, um, uh, Lisa, who's written, Lisa McAdams, who's written a book on, and she's for corporates on domestic violence. And she said, if it wasn't for the power of the safe house after crisis, mm -hmm. um, she wouldn't have, wouldn't have managed to get back on her feet and get going. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the Women's Resilience Centre launches, uh, we've got a big fundraiser event online Zoom next week on the um, 26th Thursday night. Um, mm -hmm. We'll obviously share the link. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, what, what we will do is we'll include all the details uh, for the Resilience Centre. Is it, it, it and also anything in particular? Uh, so what's the game plan here? How does one have this be a success? Is there things now that you're at work on to get this to its next stage? Uh, well, we certainly, um, yeah, we're calling upon um, anybody who wants to volunteer because we've mm -hmm. always got so many projects that we're currently uh, building and running. So we call upon any women that, or any men, we, we love men as well that want to be involved as a volunteer because you know, I, I saw it as a child um, 
abuse, domestic abuse. I, I witnessed it, I, and I, I have to say, my brothers did too. And I, and I think it's um, it's not um, it's not okay, and it really does affect um, men and their self esteem. As you know, as if, if their mother, their their soldier, their little soldier. And mm. as you you know, I, I just thank you for sharing what you shared, Carly, because. You know, that's that. Thank goodness your mum made that decision. Um, mm. what, what an incredible woman that, mm. that she did um, at 16. And um, that's an incredible share. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're always looking for volunteers. Um, so please um, look at the contact details and, and, and email me if you've got any tiny spare space because, um, you know, the audience you're, we're talking to is, is, is leaders in business and that's who we want to connect with uh, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm. So uh, just to, because, uh, you you know, we could, this is such a big conversation. I mean, there are so many yeah. things that we could go a lot deeper in on. Uh, just to bring us back, I suppose, to the thing that we were really looking at here is how, and the opportunity of everything that you're talking about, which is really the opportunity for people to reach out and ask for help. Uh, and, you know, whether that's in our career, uh, whether it's in a, a personal area of life or, I mean, any area really. And I mean, the, the point, you know, given that what, what we're ultimately about for this podcast is to support those who are in leadership positions, you know, whether you've got a business and you own a business, you know, whether you've just ventured out into the startup game, uh, whether you'd be desperate to start a business, you know, you're in corporate and you'd love to get out or, and, and those who are in big organizations, leading teams, you know, the, the, it is, it is not easy, right, Simone. And, and I do think that one of the biggest obstacles we face as leaders is, you know, rec you know the, the asking for help. But having a mentor is clearly one of those things. When we look at that, Simone, in your experience, what do you what what would you say, either from your own personal experience or what you've seen with the people you've worked with, is one of the very first things that people can do, or some of the top things that you know work when it comes to being able to reach out. What, what, should, what should we be looking for? Where do you start to think from? Yeah, are you talking about as far as mentoring? Yeah, well, I mean, that. let's focus on the mentoring side because that's one way for people to look at reaching out for advice or help. Yeah. It's not advice, right? But, but surrounding ourselves with other people who have knowledge and experience in things that we don't. Now, I know this is not, uh, in, in, you know, it's kind of, in a way, it's not, relevant to the Women's Resilience Centre, but if you think about it, kind of what's occurring there is women are going to be in an environment where they get the support they need. Now, that's something that we're putting in place to have where they don't have to ask for it because we're dealing with that problem. But in some respects, let's just say, well, what is then the way, best way for people to really, you know, if you're stuck on something or you're not getting the results that you know that you could get, what, what are some of the things that you've seen really work when it comes to looking for a mentor or taking the first step to get one? Well, I think it, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing the size of people's communities and networks. We often don't realise that. And I remember interviewing a CEO who, who was made redundant for the second time. And he said, thank goodness I learned from my first redundancy what to do for my second redundancy. And I said, what were those, what did you, what did you learn? And he said, I learned that it's really important, and he, he said, as a man, we don't do it as much as women, but to stay in touch with people just for staying in touch. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think the, the number one thing is if you're currently employed or, or if you're not, you know, people still want to communicate with you, but reach out. Mm -hmm. Reach out to the networks within your own networks. You'll be blown away with what, what's about there um, to, to, to find the right um, mentor for you because people know you so therefore they might often say I know someone that would absolutely be right for you um, so yeah at a personal level at a corporate level please come to the mentor evolution because <laughs> <laughs> we, right. can, we can set your Solve own that problem <laughs> yeah, yeah we can get that on on the way and rolling uh, yes yes and and so yeah and and so often your mentors can be in other related areas of community. Like it doesn't have to be at work. So, mm -hmm. um, but yes, I, I really do really encourage people to, yeah, to really find themselves someone for 2021. 
that, mm. that, that can carry them through hopefully mm. um, a, a bigger, better year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a absolutely. And, you know, it has been a colourful year, let's just say, right? I mean, it's uh, a, a mixed bag depending on your own personal situation, right? How, how, how difficult or, or conversely, how extraordinary it has provided some people opportunities. So um, I, I, I just to wrap up, there's a couple of questions I do want to ask about your your journey in particular and given that you know that you're an exemplary leader uh what, what would you say has been one of the biggest challenges that you have personally confronted as a leader and, and what was the lesson that you learned it's a pretty big and deep question but i have to say i hit what you call the mid 40s um and i had an f in the middle of that word uh <laughs> 44 I, I used to call it 40 f40 you know right four. um yeah it was my um it was my year but uh, but and I think often people hit a certain period um but I everything that had happened to me in my uh, childhood caught up with me I suppose right. right and um and I really had to go and do big work on that um, and I find um, in business too, we're often running really hard and usually uh, high performers, there's a connection to work addiction. Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's all justified. It's all okay. The world thinks it's okay to, to be, be a work addict. Yes. But actually work addicts are, are, are often running really hard for reasons that they may not think deeply about. Yes. So I realised that with me. And, and I really had to go and, and, and get some decent um, support. I actually got a fantastic, a, an incredible therapist that, um, I, that you know, I've worked with over seven years to work through um, resentments and to work through things in my life that I needed to, to work through. And um, it's, it, you know, it was an incredible period for me. Um, I've got staff that have been with me um, for more than a decade, two decades, one person. And, and her comment when I said, I'm going to get some work done, she said, sometimes you have to go and pick strawberries. Mm. And, and I did, I picked strawberries. But the thing was that she says today, Camilla Altadona says that, you know, Sim, you are such a better leader today from doing all the work that you did on yourself. Mm. And, um, and I, I, you know, I really encourage people, um, if, you, if you know, if it's not okay, if you're not okay, um, there are, and I'm more than happy offline to talk to people one-on-one -on, -one on email or anything about mm, that. Mm, mm. Well, thank you for vulnerably sharing that. And, and, and you are not alone. Uh, you know, I think uh, there's no shame as a human being to acknowledge that, that there are things that we need to work on ourselves. And, and in fact, Simone, I don't, I don't think there's actually been any person that I've spoken to who's at a level of leadership that they've, you know, overcome some stuff that they would say at the end of the day, it had nothing to do with their environment or what they were dealing with. And yes, whilst the environment may have been difficult, uh, there's inevitably things that they that found strength from actually putting their attention on doing the work themselves and and to admit that is there's no there's no shame uh you know i i for one for the last three years you know i, I think i you know i'm still very much in that journey i mean having come uh, having had some trauma, you know, when I was very young, uh, uh, there are still residual things that I've, I've come to discover by a book published by some, I don't actually know the guy's name, I've just ordered it online called The Body Keeps Score, that even mentally, when you think that you've got a lot of clarity uh, about things and you can see things and you've got a high level of self-awareness, when the body is carrying trauma, uh, our reactions to certain, certain things are just so automatic. And, you know, to be really straight, Right, Simone, uh, you know, there's this level of automatic anger that occurs for me uh, in, in my reaction to things that happen out there in the world. Like I have this kind of just natural content and I really like someone says boo and I go, Rah! you know, <laughs> where's the fight in the dog, you know? Um, and, and people find that really surprising about me because, it, you know, I, I've become very, you know, I've spent 20 years in the game of transformation, right? So I've really mastered uh, the ability to distinguish my thoughts and reactions and everything like that. But you shouldn't, like, it's just always there for me, you know? Like when mm. things don't look the way I think they should look, I'm like one goddamn angry ant. And I thought... <laughs> 
holy shit, it's time to do something about that. And so, you know, this is now current for me. You know, I've just heard about this new, well, it's not new, apparently it's been around forever, um, called EMDR or something, something about eye movement defense response, which deals with all this residual stuff that happens in trauma. And I'm like, man, I'm so, <laughs> I can't tell you how, I mean, who gets excited about going to see a bloody therapist? But, you know, I've spent five, a good five years having dealt with all the this stuff that I'm kind of now like really ready for. I'm just so done with having this experience of being angry all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. So of anger uh, is insight and knowledge though. So when mm-hmm. I often think it's great when you're angry, you just got to learn how to manage the anger. Totally. What, is, what am I learning from it? But um, totally. I'm going to get that book. I love it. The body keeps score. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. So um, then my final question is really just what comes to mind for you when I say the following statement. So if I can get you to complete mm-hmm. the statement for me. Yeah. It is a leader is someone who, uh, walks beside. <laughs> I love that. A leader who walks be- is someone who walks beside. Very simple. Mm. Okay, fabulous. So I, I am going to put all the details of the show note in the show notes, uh, Simone, about uh, the mental revolution and in particular about the Women's Resilience Centre. Uh, mm-hmm. But we do before we do jump off, is there any final thing that you wanted to share about mentoring your journey or any any word wise words of mentoring that you would impart? Um, just that, you know, mentors, well, I would say that mentors, you know, find the hope within, Mm. uh, and so often we don't see that in ourselves, but someone else can see it glaringly about Mm. someone. It's amazing. So, so, and you know, the chatter in our heads that, um, I've been reading a great, doing a program called the artist's way. And, um, it, it forces me every morning to journal for, uh, three pages about whatever's going on in my mind, but it's often just mm. chitter chatter, chitter chatter. Um, mm. And so, uh, you know, I think a mentor helps you to um, allow the chitter chatter that sometimes sits there to share it with someone else that mm. that you trust. Um, so yeah, I really encourage you to to uh, to find to find a mentor or to look at yeah, uh, come and look at the mentor evolution and see what we're about. Um, and uh, yeah, my only final comment is if you get a second, please join us for the, the launch of the Women's Resilience Centre. It'll be so powerful for the impact on, on families in Australia, not just women, but families. Um, so, um, yeah, we're really, I'm really excited about that. And I was just timely and grateful, grateful, Kylie, that you, you asked me to participate in this podcast. Well, thank you. And, I, and, and I'm really glad I asked you that question because even when you do reach out for a mentor, folks, please, uh, you know, remember that you don't have to go in there, uh, you know, as if you have anything handled. In fact, the, what, what Simone suggested here about the journaling, uh, you, you know, w- as a mentor and, you know, when you reach out to a mentor, mentor, you know, we're all human. We all have that internal chatter and that doubt. Uh, and often the best way, as you say, you know, is journal it for sure. But there's nothing to hide when you get in a conversation with a mentor because a mentor does have your back. So thanks for sharing that, that Simone. I think that's a great piece of gold. And if there's one action I do suggest that you do take after listening to today's podcast, it certainly is to, you know, get yourself clear, write down a journal if you need to about all the things that you notice are in the way of you reaching out to get a mentor, then park it and then actually go take the action and find someone who you trust. One conversation is all it takes to get yourself started all right well thanks Simone thank you for joining me and uh, and Kylie just one other thing so often with intergenerational aunts and uncles that are no longer around over Christmas even if you've got a little niece or a nephew um, that you know it's kind of nice to even ask them can I mentor you because um it, you know, I don't think young guns will necessarily ask, but you, if you ask them, I know my son was asked by someone if they could be his mentor. And he was so happy about that. He oh. continued to talk about the fact that someone wanted to be his mentor. Mm. So, yeah, I just, I'm glad, yeah, my, my God, I'm like, I'm glad you brought up that. I'm glad you brought up that. No, that is fantastic. Because if you are someone who could be mentoring other people and you're not, hey, Ready? <laughs> Pick up the phone and go call someone who you think you could mentor. Do that now. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for All joining right. me, Simone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.